Rules Committee. Uh, at this time, I'd like to ask Mr. Garvin if he'd like to lead the invocation. <clears throat> Father in heaven, creator of all things, we thank you for this time we can meet to do business for the Cherokees. We ask now that you would bless each one that's here today. And Father, I pray that you would guide us as we make decisions. May they be wise when I pray that everything will be done decently and in order. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Darby. Uh, Shelly, you want to go Bill England? Here. Bill John Baker? Here. Jack Baker? Here. Julia Heads? Jody Fishinghoff? Here. Janelle Fulbright? Don Garvin? Okay. Chuck Hoskin Jr. Here. Tyna Glory Jordan. Lee Keener Jr. Behind me. Dick Lake. Here and yes. Curtis Snell. I just like David Thornton. David Walking Stick. Here, yes. Kara Callum Watts. Honey. We do have a form. Yes, Shelly. Uh, next item on the agenda is approval of minutes, and we'll do these in one. Uh, so we'll do July the 12th first. I hear a motion. Make a motion to be approved. Second. Got a motion, got a second. All in favor of accepting July 12th special session? Say aye. 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 All opposed? Hearing none, that's passed. Uh, July the 28th, regular session. Hear a motion? Make a motion to be approved. Second. Got a motion, got a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passed. Uh, next item on the agenda is the Marshall Report. Uh, under reports, the Sharon Wright. Is anybody here to represent Sharon? Here's the Marshall list either delayed or, or not attending, I'll give her a call and if you would defer her report just a moment, we'll see if she's coming. We can do that. Okay, uh, the Attorney General, Diane, I see her back there. Good afternoon. Good. You have our report and of course the big thing that's happened since we sent that to you, I reported to you at Tribal Council uh, Monday night, and that is the issuance of the decision in the Nash, Nash case for our, our Tribal Supreme Court. Um, I've been asked by your attorney just to briefly remind you, apprise you of where we are in the federal litigation. There are two federal cases, both currently now in the District of Columbia. Um, one of them is the old original van case, which has been pe pending in the District Court in the District of Columbia since approximately 2003, um, prior to the Constitutional Amendment. The other one is a case which we originally filed ourselves in the Northern District of Oklahoma, which uh, brought all of those issues regarding the treaty interpretation and the construction of the subsequent cases. Uh, we were attempting to bring those substantively before a federal court and have them decided. The Northern District Judge um, has sent that case to the District of Columbia in order for a determination by the judge there, Judge Kennedy, as to whether or not they should be consolidated. Um, judge Kennedy has not taken any action regarding that case, um, nor has he taken any action on the original Van case for approximately two years. And there are some motions that have been pending there for um, quite a while now, motions to dismiss. Um, what will happen next? You know, we have some educated guesses. We have been in contact with the uh, Friedman attorneys in the District of Columbia and Mr. Keene, of course, here locally. I anticipate that something will be filed in the District of Columbia next week. I don't know what that is. Um, I guess the most positive thing I can report in that regard is we are trying to anticipate the uh, worst and prepare for it, but hope for the best. Um, and we are also you know, on good terms professionally with the other attorneys, and so far at least they're talking to us and trying to keep us apprised. 
be happy to answer any questions that you may have to the best of my ability. Does anybody on the committee have any questions of Mary? Sir. Um, I wonder, <coughs> as programs are in the middle of administering their programs and they're serving people who may be Freedmen descendants, I mean, uh, have you gotten any inquiries from them as to how to proceed at the moment? We have. Um, I think probably Secretary of State Knight is coordinating all those inquiries and all action by the administration and the departments through Acting Chief Crittenden. I know that we were talking about that as recently as this morning. Um, nothing is going to happen immediately. Um, and of course, we will, when we do take action, we'll do it in a planned, um, coordinated manner, um, you know, with due regard for due regard for people. Nobody's going to, you know, yank health services today from somebody in the course of treatment. We didn't do that the last time, and we won't do it this time. But everyone's speaking to everyone. Everybody's trying to talk and, and have a coordinated plan through the acting chief. And do we have, and, and you may not be able to answer this, maybe Secretary Knight can, do we have an idea of how many freedmen are going to be immediately impacted by this in terms of those who are receiving services right now, whether it's a housing service or a medical service? I do not. Uh, we're still looking at that. Um, at this point, we don't have a definitive number. Um, however, the by and large, the, the biggest estimate is health, and then we have a fairly good estimate of approximately 400 patients that would be affected by it. Um, what we did the last time and what we would intend to do this time would be to provide them with a 90-day notice by letter uh, that would give them an opportunity to transfer to other providers and provide lists of other resources where they can uh, transfer their care to another provider. Um, if they're in a specific uh, course of care, um, that will be determined more medically uh, than administratively. So if it must stand, extend beyond the 90 days for a specific course of care, then we'll, we would consider those cases. And then there could be instances in which a Friedman family is in the middle of a, I don't know if this is true or not, but in the middle of a home rehabilitation, and would we sort of as an act of grace complete that, or would we? We've identified at least one of those uh, families, and yes, if we're in the middle of providing a service like that, we intend to complete the service, um, not, not leave it half done. And um, uh, so if we are engaged in the middle of providing such a service, we would complete it. Uh, if they are on the waiting list and have not been engaged in a service yet, um, then of course we would not keep them uh, on the waiting list because they would no longer be eligible. But. Is the same true for scholarships if they've received a scholarship this semester? Uh, this semester, yes. Uh, we would not, you know, for example, request repayment of a scholar scholarship. Um, if they've received one for this semester, we would continue this semester. Uh, when we renew uh, the scholarship in the spring is when that would be reevaluated. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Speaker Watts. So is there anything that can be done from your office uh, in order to make sure that the interpretation of the congressional language concerning our housing funds be considered or stayed into appropriate interpretation? Because I feel like we have done all our part, and it's been through the proper course of action to go to our courts, uh, which is within the interpretation of the actual language. The language talks about, and I didn't bring it with me, um, the pendency of the litigation. The litigation in the tribal court is, is over. So that stay did remain in effect during the pendency of the litigation. I hope that there's something that we can do, and we really are, um, I know it sounds trite, but we really are considering all of our options. You know, from negotiation, litigation, um, congressional, proactive response. We've, we've talked to the, the folks in Washington um, and are considering how best to address that if it arises. Okay. And you'll keep us posted? I certainly will. Okay, very good. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Well, any other questions? Seeing none, thank you, Diane. Thank Good you. Report. Next, uh, well, did I see uh, the chair in Milwaukee? Yes, what I have. I have one question. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I apologize for that. For Diane. Yes. Okay. Uh, Diane, Mr. Lake has a question for you. 
I, I failed to I'm see sorry. That. Thank you. Uh, have, have the, the Friedman groups filed a stay or, or filed for a stay at this time that you know of? Before, as of the time I went to lunch um, today, they had not. Uh, and what we have been told uh, by the, the lawyers in D.C. is that while they anticipate filing such a something, uh, it will probably be next week. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Jody? I've heard talk about them wanting to file a stay and stay the election. Have you heard anything about that? You know, certainly something that they could do, and they tried before. Uh, to prevent our election from happening. I, I would hope that that is not the case, um, but it, it, is, it is a possibility. Thank you. Any other questions? You too, Jody? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Washington. Thank you. Okay, Sharon, I see her on the front row, ready to go. <laughs> Sorry for being late. Um, you do have my report submitted. There were three questions, I believe, that I was asked last rules committee meeting. I did not get those addressed in my my report, so I can address those, and I've got them in written form. If you want to pass them around. Um, And I think that the three questions were, first, what was the cost of doing the administrative uh, processes that we had to do for the weaknesses that were found in evidence and, and supply inventories? Uh, we had readjusted people's schedules. So over a period of eight months, there was about 66 hours, I believe, uh, 62 hours of overtime by each of those people. To try to help get that cleared up and that was to a total cost of about $2,800. Um, and then the other one was um, did we hire people in to do the uh, reviews and different things to find those weaknesses and we did <coughs> not. Um, BIA and, and Cherokee Nation Evaluation and Compliance both came in and did reviews and looked through our processes and evaluation and compliance was very good to help us uh, identify any weaknesses we might have in our policies and to correct those before BIA even came in. So um, on the last part, and BIA helped us with the evidence on the first part. So those were uh, no cost to us. Yes, it cost the nation apparently, you know, but uh, that's their, under their guidance is to do such. And um, Last I spoke with uh, Mr. Ragsdale, he said that he had answered uh, the last question about the employment agreements through a GRA, that he had supplied those to Mr. Hembry. Is that right? Did they get to you? Pardon me? The two employment agreements that I have. There was a question of that, and they, they had yes, suggested. Yes, uh, there was a question on that, and it was uh, uh, a history of uh, emails that had so those were the th three questions that I was to address from last rule. Uh, I have a question from Mr. Baker. Now, and, and you said that you know that the, the nation paid something, and uh, but was it like $45,000? For what? Uh, no, I said the BIA and the uh, and the evaluation and compliance. I'm sure there was a cost for their salaries, but under their guidances, they would have paid those anyway for any um, uh, department that was having issues. Do you think it was like forty-five thousand dollars? I have no idea. Any other questions? Chuck? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Did you say the GRA, in reference to the GRA <coughs> response, did, did Mr. Hambry say he did have that? He said, yes, uh, 
this was um, uh, some time ago. They were made available uh, to my office uh, for inspection and for anyone else. This was back almost a year ago, and that's oh. why I, I lost track of it. So um, if, if that needs to reoccur again, I'm sure it can, it can be reoccur under the same auspices that it first happened at. Councillor, well, Councillor Lloyd Jordan has just entered the room, but um, I wanted to make sure that the questions she posed that are reflected in our minutes were answered. Those uh, were the only three questions I remember. One of them was, were there policies or procedures that didn't put in place to make sure that the situation didn't occur again? And I, has that been provided? They are put in place and they are available on our website and I can get those over here. They're, they're about 500 pages. So um, other than bringing up 500 page book. Well, you could tell us the gist of what the thrust of what was changed. And I think that's probably what Councilor Gloria Jordan wanted to know. And I don't mean to speak for the councilwoman, but she just walked in. So is there, is there, can you prepare a summary memo of what was changed? I mean, I think we just wanted to know what was done in response, not we do the 500 pages necessarily. <laughs> well, um, we bought a new evidence system, uh, new software and all of those things, components to it. Uh, we developed a process that was um, very close to what the BIA utilizes. They helped us with the, the procedures and those things on that. Uh, in fact, the whole policy and procedure, uh, BIA has a, we went from about a 50 page process to a 500 page policy. Um, and there's is this probably won't mean a lot to many of you, but it's CALEA approved. So even though it might not be for us because we haven't went through the process, it was approved by CALEA, which is the uh, Council on Law Enforcement. And goes, um, so it's a very good policy. So we adopted that. So now there is checks and balances into the inventory. We no longer keep... Uh, evidence that would have been uh, on a state case. That was one of our major weaknesses. Um, we book those in directly with the, the local agency that the case is affiliated with, not with us just because we work the case. And then we purchased a system that scans in evidence, scans it out, and it's also the same uh, system that OSBI uses so that when we scan it in they have the same numeric type scanning. So we uh, we had a large amount of uh, evidence that had been marked for destruction that had not been destroyed so it was cluttering the area. We got those all destroyed. Um, we worked with the counties to get all of their items back to them. Uh, so now the only thing that we deal with is those items that are on a uh, tribal case. And um, we went to all of the counties and talked with them on the procedures and how, how we do it in their area and how they would do it in ours so that we've cleared all of that up. Um, we use their forms when we're over there in their area, but our system is only tribal now. and we have a scanning mechanism that matches OSBIs. And then finally, Mr. Chairman, there was in the minutes, uh, Councilor Fishing, I could ask whether Tara was used with the two uh, employees who had signed service agreements. And I answered that. Did you answer that? I did answer that. I said uh, I didn't because to me it was two different things where I would use Taro for contracting it was employment, so uh, I did not use Taro. And if that was an issue, that would have been my error. And so, going forward, if there's a need to hire to sign a service a service agreement with some person to provide that kind of service, Taro is the order of the day, right? I mean, that's uh... if Taro is part of the employment process. Yes, I I was not aware, and I will uh, verify that with HR. But I've never knew that Taro was a part of employment. I thought it was directly within the contracts purchasing arena. Yeah, I can answer that. 
Terrell is not applicable to the HR employment agreements. We have a whole set of rules and regulations for hiring people and those rules and regulations apply to HR. Okay. So to the extent we contract with someone to provide a mowing service, let's say for the council house, you'd consider that a contract that comes under Terrell. If yes. we hired somebody under contract to work the phones for us, I, I, again, this is hypothetical. You haven't been posed with this, but would that be under the HR realm and you saying Terrell does not apply? If, if you were going to hire a temporary service to provide temporary secretarial services, let's say, that would be a Terrell type of agreement contract. Mm -hmm. If you were going to hire a temporary person or if you're going to hire a permanent person, that would be under the HR requirements. Those folks were permanent in nature is, is how, is that, is, that, is that the distinction that those folks that were contracted with were? Well, you're, I think you're confusing temporary services that are provided by a contractor with individuals that come in and apply or appoint as personnel. Well, there's where I think there's a distinction without a difference because a, a single person could come in and provide a service. And I think it kind of obliterates Terrell if we don't apply it to them on the sole basis that it's not some entity, some tip agency, some contracting service. I, I mean, I think it's, it's a healthy debate to have, but I just think we disagree on that being a distinction that makes any meaningful difference in the analysis. Well, I mean, and what I, what I would like is for us to look into this further. And I know there's some other council members who went away into this. And, and I, actually, I'd, a, I'd like to ask Mr. Hembree if he could, not on the spot, but if you could look into this issue. Because, I mean, it seems to me if we're con contracting with individuals to provide a service that Terrell ought to apply. But, again, you know, reasonable people would disagree. And, and one of the, one of the things that, in my head, in it, right or wrong, is you have to have a job description to match up to for an employment agreement. I mean, you have to say, okay, these are the jobs that you really want them to do or the duties you want them to do. And you only need them for a period of time. And, and, and they're providing a service that they're very well qualified for. And, you know, it's just different where, if I was to hire someone over there to do a, a service and they didn't require a job description, they just required them to meet a certain contract liability, if that is the difference. I mean, because they really don't require you to have some type of job description for some things. And they do for some of the others. And, and that was one of the requirements, is to have some type of job description for an employment agreement. I mean, I think often you contract with an individual to avoid some of the things that hamper you when you hire them as employees. That's why you kind of, sometimes that's why you kind of, not you, but generally speaking. I think in this case, if you do that, you fall under tarot. But I, I appreciate the position. I'm, I'm not saying, in my mind, it's not necessarily the easiest distinction to draw. But I think that it's incorrect to say that tarot doesn't apply. So let's talk about it more. And maybe Mr. Embry can help us all out on our end. So I appreciate it. I think we could have that debate. But essentially, the Cherokee Nation and most tribal governments that I'm aware of follow the same process. We follow the same process of the distinction between hiring contractors for long-going services, temporaries for temporary service when you're hiring Temps Incorporated, and so on and so forth. That's the way it's always been distinguished since I've been working at the Cherokee Nation. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Next is Counselor Keener. Do you want on the list? Did you? Yes, Sharon, let's change that. I'll yield to Counselor Carson Jordan if it's on the same topic for tarot. Well, mine kind of goes to tarot, but it's a little more in-depth to her report. OK, then I'll yield. OK, you want to yield your time now? OK. I noticed on this report that you provided for us today, Sharon, that you said there was no cost to the marshal service for the reviews. I think my question was, was there a cost to the nation for these reviews to take place on the issues pertaining to law enforcement? 
And if you did, that's not how I took it. You asked me what my cost was for these, and outside of the overtime cost, I, I didn't have any other costs. Evaluation did and compliance not, comes in. Did we in. not hire a company to come in and evaluate your program and sh uh, make suggestions as to how to shore up certain weaknesses? I have not hired any company to come in. I'm not What's talking about you. Did Cherokee Nation Evaluation and Compliance hire a company? We did. And pay them? We did. Out of Cherokee Nation funds? Out of Evaluation and Compliance Cherokee Nation and funds. And how much was that amount? I don't remember, but it wasn't $45,000. I can provide that information to you. Well, I would like for it to be provided because will, this report leads us to think there was no cost. And there was a cost. In fact, there was a cost of around $50,000 at different times. And this was another sole source contract that was done without applying tarot to that contract. Now, isn't that true, Pat? On the tarot issue, I'm not aware of any tarot contractor. Pat, that was this contract that issued paper. pursuant to tarot? It was issued pursuant to our contracting regulations, ma'am. You didn't follow Terrell, though, did you? There was not a Terrell contractor that was qualified to do the work. Did we put out a proposal, a request for proposal? No, it was a very short-term contract. Mm -hmm. We make them all the time with Cherokee Mission. Mm -hmm. And are you not misleading us by saying there's no cost other than $2,000? For my program, that's what I... I did not ask for your program. The question was to provide me a summary of the additional costs associated with the inventories mm -hmm and other issues associated with this issue. That's what's in our minutes, and I assume the minutes have just been approved. That asks for a cost for the whole tribe. I want to know what the tribe paid for this issue. Well, then there needs to be further research because I would have that's, to look at the right. salaries, of, salaries of other folks. And, and I'm tired I, of being that. misled. This mm. report is misleading to this body. There was a lot more than $2,800 expended on this issue, and you two know it. And you gave us a report that reflects to us that only $2,800 was spent. I'm irritated, and probably because I've just had some medicine for something else, but I'm telling you right now, I don't want this to happen again. Don't mislead this body with your reports. Now I'm done. Thank you. If, if I may respond, Mr. Chairman. Sure, go ahead. Um, the evaluation and compliance report was a part of our nor normal and ongoing responsibilities to evaluate. But we hired someone and used Cherokee Nation's money to pay them. You all can say yeah. all day this didn't cost us any money. It did cost us money. It cost us money to the tune of at least $50,000. And this report does not reflect that. I'd like to see your number, Councilwoman, to be able to respond to that adequately. I don't know where you got 50000 I guess I'll have to make a GRA to get that number because I've been well, told that more to number. That. In, well, and then I'll get it three months from now. No, I respond to your GRAs because I do it all the time. You knew she was going to give us this report. I'm sure you have reviewed this report, Pat. I did not review her report. You're saying you did not know she was going to tell this body that the cost of those issues was only $2,849. My assumption was the question Are you was, not over her? No, ma'am, I'm not. Did no, ma'am, I'm not. But you, you paid this I, out of your area, right? I paid for the contractor out of valuation compliance. Excuse me, Mr. Chair, can we have one person at one time and allow the person to respond to the question? Okay, We've got too much going on, and I would appreciate so I can follow the good councilwoman's well, the, Discussion. Point, the point is, and I'll close it up, the point is I know this costs a lot more than $2,849. I've had informal reports from different people that almost $50,000 was spent on it. And that is not what's reflected in this report, and I believe they are uh, now, I don't want to say they're out and out lying, but there is something wrong when we get a report that something costs $2,800 when it costs closer to $50,000. Now that's the point I'm trying to make. These reports that are given to us need to be accurate. This is not an accurate reflection of the cost associated with this issue. 
and they need to be up front with us about these costs. And this is another example of a sole source contract that was given out without complying with tarot. And that needs to stop. And if we need to beef up our tarot laws, then we, this body needs to do it. We need to be hiring Indians and we need to be paying Indians. We don't need to be paying buddies of people that are employed here and that's what happened in this case. Now, that's my comment. I don't care what his response is at this point because I know what has happened on this issue. Now, they can try to sugarcoat it all they want, but that is what happened here. And there is a report somewhere floating around that is talking about Sharon's department, and we have not been privy to it. And, Pat, I think you're holding it. And it came from your group, and it needs to be released so we can evaluate some of the deficiencies that's going on in the law enforcement area. No one has ever asked for that report, and I, we do Why reports all the time. Why should we have to ask for it? Why shouldn't it have already been released? You've been sitting on it for months. Look, now you're that's the, my integrity, that's the truth, Pat. I am what, challenging. What, 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 I am at this point of order challenging. Point of order. Point of order. Point of order. Yeah. Part of the Cherokee Constitution. This needs needs to go into executive session, yes. or the discussion needs to stop. Then we need to put it on the next meeting for executive session, and I would request that. Okay. Your challenge to my integrity is a lie. <clears throat> Well, I think I can also say this report is not truthful. Okay, that's enough on this. Point of order. Just on what basis is the executive session necessary? Uh, is it for personnel? Well, it's not necessary for personnel. It's this report. Okay. It's not being truthful. I mean, frankly, Mr. Chairman, discussing whether a report exists and whether it's been submitted is not executive session worthy. The substance of that might be, and if we weigh into that, I'm just, my opinion is that we shouldn't too, be too quick to throw okay. something into executive okay. session. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We have, we have several people in line and we're bouncing back and forth, so I'm going to ask for, uh, uh, Kara, you're next. Come on. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I had brought to the attention as someone who'd worked on the tarot issues since I've been on council that I felt like the policy was not inclusive of tarot and had asked internally that that be addressed and I understood through one email that it was going to be addressed and that this had been brought to the attention and that we should allow them to comply um, and bring that forward. Now of course that meant that anything prior to this might be a lost opportunity. Granted but we do need to look at that policy, and I brought it to their attention. Now, if there is something where a GRA request has not been complied with, I am happy to try to address those, but this would be the first time that I knew that there wasn't GRA requests being complied with, or that maybe a request for information had been misunderstood and not completed to the satisfaction of any council member. Um, so maybe we need to work together to figure out what those are, but I know they can't answer anything if they don't have additional details. So I appreciate that there's frustration, but we're all Cherokee citizens, and I assume we're all trying to work towards the same goal, uh, and accusations don't get that in public meetings. I think we should try to do it a different way, and, and I know that I will help work with any council member to try to get those information brought forward. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, next is uh, Dick Light. Buell, Light. I think he deferred his time to me. Can I just ask your uh, Councilman Watts one other question? If, if you'll just kind of make it brief, I'll make it brief. string it out. I'm asking uh, Speaker Watts to have that report released to this body, to ask that that report be released to this body. You can respond. <laughs> I just don't. You say report, and I mean, yeah, I, I think he's admitted that there was a report, and he knows the report I'm talking about. Okay, so that all minds are clear and that there's no confusion and we get what you're asking for, I need something other than a report. It so, was the report that was prepared by his department regarding the issues pertaining to the weaknesses in the marshal's department. And I think it also covers some other areas of the marshal service. So it was a, a review of operations for the marshal service by government relations. Or resources. Resources. <coughs> and government resources um, 
and that would be provided and I would just say that if there are personnel matters involved then that would have to be stamped confidential and that would only be at the purview of each council member not to be shared with anyone else uh, Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chairman, um, a couple things. Uh, first, uh, Mr. Ragsdale has just stated that he would provide uh, the report to uh, to my office to be disseminated to the uh, uh, to the council. Uh, secondly, that the uh, uh, the proper way, you know, and everyone knows how to, have, this would be a document that would be retrievable under the Governmental Records Act, and we can make that request in specific specificity and we can it does have time frames in there there's a little bit of leeway but we can adhere and make sure that those time time frames are uh, uh, met I, I believe it even being more specific is the compliance with an audit of the sheriff's or the marshal's department Mr. And, and not a summary the actual report as it was written you will provide me a report and we can also uh, uh, do a detailed GRI and I would ask that Todd do that on, on my behalf. And okay, Madam Speaker, or Mr. Chair, just to, com compl <laughs> just to clarify, he is billed hourly. I'm typing it up right now. So it will be at no cost to the council body, and I'm making it at this moment. Can I just speak I didn't to the speaker <laughs> watch is going, she's typing it. You're getting CC'd you. on it right now. Okay. okay. Can I just speak to just a couple of things? Well, we have a couple more questions, so you might want to just pile them up there a little bit. Okay. Hold that thought. Mr. Lay, you're next. Thank you, sir. Uh, this either question or comment probably goes as much to Pat as to Sharon, if I may. And I noticed a while ago you said you don't have to follow these terrible rules in that particular case that you were talking about. Is that correct? Or? What I meant to say, I mean, if I didn't say it clearly, when we contract for lawn mowing services or with a company, Carol applies. If a person is hired under a agreement, whether it's temporary, part-time, or permanent, to get an employee agreement, the HR rules and regulations apply for the hiring of those people. I guess one point that, you know, I've known you a long time, and I guess one of the things I'd like to see us do is probably try to do in their preference hiring, and especially Cherokee hiring, every chance we get. Apparently these positions were not such. Uh, it's gone by now, but it's, it's too late to fill that gap now. But Going forward, I would like to see both of you try to, to do that and stay with that Indian preference and Taro and Cherokee preference hiring. Thank you. Well, that is our that is our policy of 90% of all the employees that are on board uh, at Cherokee Nation are Indians. 80% of them are Cherokees. The other 10% are not Indians. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jody, you're next. Yeah. Um, Tom? I'll tell you what I'd like you to do. I'm not a lawyer, a lifelong bureaucrat like some other men, and I don't can't code anything. I want you to go through this whole mess with somebody, and please find out why Carol wasn't followed. If you have to get with Diane Kelly, please do, because me and Tina asked about this about three months ago. And Todd, with me, everything is everything. You know that. You know, I don't want this beating around the bush, leaving stuff out, not answering questions, or talking around. I am tired of us doing ready, fire, aim. After we do something, then we try to talk around it and get it to fit what we did. Well, folks, I'm tired of that. This is my last four years, and I'm not going to I'm not gonna sit here and listen to somebody tell me this anymore. You thought I was abrupt the first four. Y'all's going to be surprised. But I want this looked into because when somebody sits in front of me and says, I don't have to follow tarot, man, you might as well wave a red tape at me. That's bull. We need to follow tarot, and we need to hire turkeys. So would you please look and see where the breakdown is with this? We will cooperate with uh, every aspect of uh, the administration and make sure that all questions are answered and all documents are discussed. And then wherever these holes were, that they evidently there's quite a bit of holes in here on hiring, would you please write something on them so we can show them hiring holes up, where whether we're dealing with contracts, temporary, permanent services, mowing the lawn, or what have you, we look at <coughs> turkeys first. That ain't too much to ask. Okay, thank you. 
Chuck, you're next. I withdraw, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Any other questions? Oh, you want to come back now? I do. Um, trying to answer the questions and respectfully on the memo that I gave you on the cost. I thought that she asked me for my costs and did anybody else see this memo before you got it today? They did not. In fact, I did not even get a chance to share it with administration. So um, had someone else had any knowledge of what was the content, they did not. That came from me, and I prepared it the best I knew what the question was. As far as the reviews and audits, I have addressed everything that I know that I should have addressed, but do I have an audit in hand? I was even admonished because I said BIA gave us such a good standing because verbally they did, but we have not even received an audit from them, let alone any other area. But everything that I have been verbally told that I need to correct, I have tried to correct. So um, talking about the audits being held from anybody, we have not received it in my department to date from anybody. Purchasing processes, I try to adhere to all of the purchasing processes. So when we do things, if uh, they suggest to do a sole source or different things, purchasing themselves will suggest this would be better if you want these things to do a sole source. So we do sole sources occasionally. And as far as Cherokee preference, if you look at my long-term employees, they are Indians, except for the ones that I did not hire. And if I was going to hire someone temporary, part-time, that I knew was not going to stay on, that's the only time I would consider because, and this is, this is uh, probably very harsh coming from me, but I would rather have someone who's a non-Indian who I can let go tomorrow for no more services because I don't need you than someone that I would affect long-term. So, you know, sometimes we make decisions that may not be popular, but at the time they seem very sound, and they sound, seem sound to me to this day. So I may have made some errors, or I may have made some judgments that you don't appreciate, but I stayed within those policies. Okay. Uh, hang on, Sharon. Jody? Yeah, Sharon, would you give me a list of, because I'm wanting to say you got to me before, of all your hire in your departments, which one at Cherokee and which one's non Cherokee, just continue from the last one. I know you've done it for me a couple of years ago. And put the higher dates on there because I'm going to tell you what I'm looking at, and I'll be honest. I'm looking at a trend because I did notice that you were hiring Cherokees, but there seemed to be some people in there before you that we've had for a while. And if you have any of them over at CNE, would you please include them on there? I don't hire anybody at CNE. Okay, some of our marshals ain't. Where would I get that information? The ones well, I mean, I have some that contract that I have working there, but I don't have, I don't hire over at CNE. Okay, well, could, could you get the ones that's contract at CNE? Mm -hmm. I would appreciate it. Sharon, do we have a couple of special contracts where they're not in the I, I have one that is non-Indian and one that is a non-Cherokee. And those now, are the only two employment those contracts. Those contracts, yeah. Yeah. Um, One has a year left. The other one, I'm not real sure, but I think it has a year left. Did we just remove those? No, one was a longer term contract. One was like a four year contract and one was a two year contract. Okay. So, but I think they're going to end very close to the same time, but I would have to check. Do they have 30 day termination clause for any reason? I believe I'd have to look, they, but they are the standard contract that the tribe uses. And uh, I bet they have a 30-day termination. It, I'd I have would, to look. I would ask you to review those and email me whether that 30-day termination clause is in those contracts. I'd 
like to uh, ask that you send, when you send those emails, send the entire body the answers to all those questions. And also, on the, uh, there was an incident uh, this week on trust land, and the family wanted me to thank you specifically and the marshals for their outstanding service. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Diane, are you still in? Is Diane still in? Do you have anything on that uh, GED? GED? No. Okay. Uh, election Commission, I don't see uh, Brenda Walker. Is anybody here for, from the Election Commission? The Tax Commission, I see her. Mr. Chair? Oh, yes. Um, I just as a, because it is election commission on the agenda, that you should have in front of you the memo about the filling of the vacancy for District 2. And I think we have too much on our agenda to consider today, so we'll either call a special rules meeting, maybe at your request, or consider it at next month's rules meeting. And we'll need to make sure and, and have, because we need to set that date within 90 days of August 14th. And it kind of outlines. And we could, I think we should set a special rules to, to do that. Okay. So we'll meet the timing for it. Thank you, Mr. Chair, for the yeah. consideration. Chairman Ireland, did, uh, was no one here from the Office of the Attorney General? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I did have one question for her. Did I miss her? Yes. Uh, Diane, you want to? I'm still here. <coughs> Diane, can you give us an update on the impact of the Nahasta funding as pertains to the um, Freeman decision? So far, there's been none. Um, we received, and of course, David Sutherland and Marvin Jones could answer this for you programmatically much better than me. But um, we have our 2010 funding, it's my understanding. We actually have the cash. We just received our 2011 award letter, grant award letter, which we signed and returned. Um, there have not been any negative repercussions as a result of the Friedman decision. We're well aware of the language. Um, I was going to ask, did you review the language of the I, federal I, law? I have. Um, you know that I believe that you can make an argument that we fulfilled the requirement there that the stay remained in effect during the litigation. The litigation is seized and the stay is seized. <coughs> I beg your pardon, I'm just like, you I just took some medication. It's well, I just went and got two shots, so. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Anyway, we do know about it. We're apprised. We're considering all avenues of um, attack, if need be. I'm really concerned because I read the language that when that stay lifted, that triggered an automatic stoppage of funds. We have not received that from the okay. code. Oh, well, don't. No. Could you keep us apprised? I of certainly it? will. That's $30 million and probably about 500 jobs in play that we, if, we, if they don't send us down our 211 money, we're going to start seeing an immediate effect I think October 1st is when yes. we'll start seeing the immediate effect. And we talked about this a little bit in our Tuesday meeting. And I, I just can't tell you how important it is that we do something to resolve this because it's going to have a, a fairly immediate impact over the next couple of months on, I believe, around 500 jobs here across the nation if we don't get that money. So if you would keep us surprised, as, yes, well. as uh, Councilman Keener has asked, let, let all of us know by email. Give us updates as that transpires. You know, it's probably something we can discuss offline, but in the past I've always um, sent things to the speaker, to a staff member here at the Council House, and to Mr. Hembry. If you've got a, an address box that includes all of your addresses, I don't know what that is, and that would make it ever so much simpler. Okay. I believe Shelly can provide that too. Okay. Yes, Shelly. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Thank you, Diane. Uh, now, Ms. Weston, your turn. 
Afternoon. I believe you do have my report, and I will try to address any questions that you might have regarding that report. Any questions? No questions? Thank you, Sharon. Thank you. Oh, you got a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Self government. Vicki? Is Vicki here? Okay. Gaming Commission. Jamie, you're not going to get that sweet welcome you get from the speaker all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Just come on up. Let's go. Glad for you to see me. Uh, I believe I have my report in to you uh, this month and uh, welcome any questions you might have on that. But also have a uh, response to a couple of questions I received from uh, Council Members Baker and Glory Jordan a, a couple of meetings back that I had the response to. I apologize for not delivering it sooner, but I was not able to uh, make the last couple of meetings. Instead of passing it around, I'll just give it to Shelly. She can pass it around to everybody. Is that okay? That's okay. Sure, that'll work perfect. And this is in regards to the um, questions raised about uh, licensing of individuals, uh, and in particular, day work participants at the uh, gaming facilities. And um, if you have any questions on that, uh, I'll be glad to answer those at any time. Any questions, Jamie? Thank you, Jamie. Codification, Mr. Hembry. Well, as the yeah. summer of 2011 continues to uh, work its magic, we have uh, been uh, tied up with other activities uh, uh, that uh, Mr. Wharton and I have dedicated ourselves to. Um, codification, again, stands ready to uh, uh, be extremely close to, uh, to, to complete. Um, uh, hopefully, uh, uh, by this time next month, things have will dive down, die down on several different fronts, so that we can uh, get the uh, the final uh, uh, push past the goal line on this. Uh, so uh, we we'll defer to next month. But we, I will talk with Mr. Morton to see if he's had uh, further communications with uh, Westlaw about a bid yet. Any questions, Mr. Todd? Thank you, Todd. Uh, Restoration, uh, citizenship data, uh, Todd Hinton. Uh, Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this uh, month I didn't submit a formal report, but I wanted to uh, update you on the, the few tasks that were completed this month. Last time I gave a fairly in-depth report of where we are in the process and how things are going. Uh, we met with uh, uh, one of the businesses that conducts the work and uh, we have even better news. So no water county has been our challenge, Mr. Hoskins, as we've discussed several times. Um, they are confident that we can, uh, once we engage a contractor, that that work can be completed within two months, which is faster than we expected. So that would give us um, 911 addressable streets and point locations for the entire county, which we can ultimately hand over to the county as well. So. Uh, for a cost of around $30,000 is the estimate and about a 60-day project timeline, we will have the data for Nowater County, which is much better than we expected. So very pleased about that. Uh, last time I reported, we got data for Sequoia County. We hope to receive Adair County fairly soon, and McIntosh County will be coming right in behind that. So um, our plan is uh, for the P.O. boxes, uh, we are going to send out a letter post-election uh, September 24, so it doesn't get mixed up with other mailers and information from Cherokee Nation. We were going to wait uh, and let our citizens know that we need to get a verified uh, address from them that is other than a P.O. box, which is about 25,000 citizens that live inside the 14 counties. And um, we will uh, begin our contract for the work in Nowata County after October 1st. So hopefully in December we will have the data for no water count. Chuck has a question. I, I, I want to express my appreciation for the hard work that's brought you to this point, and I definitely look forward to the time when we can fulfill our duty under the law to redistrict in 2012. Yep. I, I, I grow more confident every day we work on it that we are going to meet that timeline. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 
Any other questions? Thank you, Tom. Okay, thank you. Okay, that completes our reports. Now moving to old business. Uh, item number one. This is an act, and uh, Mr. Hoskins. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, the issue is the same as it's been since I introduced this in March, and that is what role should the council have in naming our buildings and what uh, reasonable restrictions might we place on the executive branch with respect to naming buildings. Um, what this act does is it requires that any significant name, as I would put it, of any building that Cherokee Nation government has uh, be designated by act of council rather than through the unilateral action of the executive branch. Um, I think that's what is the practice in many jurisdictions, the state of Oklahoma, uh, the federal government. Uh, when it comes to naming our buildings, the people's branch of government really ought to be uh, front and center. Um, so with that, I'd move for its approval. Second. I have a second. Uh, this is an act, so would a roll call vote? issue that I've been uh, 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 working on for a while and just wanted to note that there is a policy uh, in place uh, from past and current administration that ha allows that same uh, naming of the building and the council's, council's prerogative uh, to name the building. Uh, it's always been the position of past and present uh, administration uh, that it is the council's prerogative. Just wanted to put that on the record. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, item number two under old business. Uh, this is a resolution. Uh, Mary, you want to come forward? Or acting deputy chief. Uh, Mr. Chair, Ms. Tihi is desirous of serving, but she still hasn't sought White House approval to do that. So I would request that you consider tabling this. Move to table. Second. 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 All in favor of the table? Say aye. 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 All opposed? She's taken. Right. <laughs> Thank you, Deputy Chief. You want me to stand here for the next one or you sure. want me to sit down? Yeah, no, I want you to do it right now. Okay, under new business, the item number one, this is a resolution. And I won't read it, I'll let you do it. You Thank know. you. <laughs> This is uh, just seeking confirmation of the reappointment of Jason Sober to the Gaming Commission. I believe you have his resume, and he is very well qualified. And if you have any questions, he could not be here. But oh, yeah, you are here. I almost fell over when I came in the door. Oh, there you have any questions? He's here. I'll make a motion to be approved. Second. Hey, we got a motion. Got a second. Uh, anybody have any? You want to say anything before we vote on it? Uh, just that I've really enjoyed uh, serving the nation uh, over the past several years, and um, I'm willing to continue. Um, if you consider me for another term, um, if you have any questions, I may be happy to answer them. Any questions? Okay, I'll have, oh, I just, I just have a comment. I just want to thank you because I know that it takes away from your other things in life, and you can be great about answering questions, so thank you very much. Oh, well, thank you. Like I said, I think it's an honor and privilege to serve. Okay, all, in, fa you, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Congratulations. Thank you for your Other term. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Item two. Uh, this is an act. Uh, who wants to handle this one? Uh, speaker? I move to approve. Second. Question? Mr. Uh, Sherman, the Although I you know, look at it and some of it could be implemented, uh, I really think that 
this is stuff that the council, when it's seated, needs to sit down and spend a great deal of time with, and not just uh, uh, one or two people, you know, throw a few things in to uh, tell it's fully looked at. The Carter Commission is coming in. They're going to give us a great deal of detail, a great deal of uh, instruction when the election is over. So I move we table this until uh, after the current election is done. Second. So we have a motion to table and uh, second. And all in favor of tabling, signify by say aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. aye. Man, I don't know. Let's do a roll call because I couldn't really tell. I think it was a week no, but we'll be safe. Just a point of clarification. Yes is to table. Yes is to table. No is to not table. Yes is to table. Don Garvin. No. Chuck Huskin Jr. Yes. Tina Flora Jordan. Yes. Lee Keener Jr. No. Dick Lay. Yes. Curtis Snell. Yes. David Thornton. David Walking Stick. Yes. Kara Cowan Watts. No. Bill Anglin. No. Bill John Baker. Yes. Jack Baker. Yes. Julia Coates. Jody Fishinghawk. Yes. No Fulbright. Eight yes and four no. Okay, this act is favorable. Uh, moving on to uh, item number three. This is an act, uh, Bill John. Yes, uh, this is a similar act that we brought up one time before, brought to full council. Uh, it was vetoed and uh, it uh, was not overridden. Uh, this is an act that will take 5% of, uh, of the profits of the businesses uh, and put it into direct health care, contract health, dentures, eyeglasses, uh, hearing aids, prosthesis, and other contract health needs. It won't be limited to that. Folks, everybody in this room has heard the horror stories at Claremore. And sometimes we have contract health needs that the nation cannot do and Claremore cannot. Uh, there are other instances where if we have the leeway, uh, it, I mean, if somebody doesn't have, if they've got insurance and, and we could send them through contract health, our contract with those doctors is less than what their insurance pays. It doesn't cost us anything. But if we've got the, the wherewithal to be able to say, yes, we'll send you for contract help, they can get it considerably cheaper than they can if they go on their own and they pay their deductible and those kinds of things. Uh, you know, do I think eventually we'll go back and look at other other things for some of the dividends that we're receiving? I, I do. But I don't think anybody in this room can argue the need of 5% for help. And I put it in the form of a motion to pass it to full council. Second. I have a question. Okay, hang on just one second. So we have a motion, we have a second. Okay, now discussion. Uh, I have Kara first. And then... Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We have a memo in front of us from our council attorney, Todd Hembree. I know that uh, our chairman of rules was out of pocket and we're not clear how the agenda was approved without further mm -hmm. discussion. But this has concurrent jurisdiction in three different committees. It has con jurisdiction in rules, executive and finance, and health. And it particularly should have gone to health first. So I think we need to deal with that question today before we're done with discussion because it won't go to full council without going through those other committees. And in addition, we have a memo from our acting <coughs> principal chief, Joe Crittenden, that says that he agrees that this needs additional study and that we should not just 
push through some kind of political uh, need to try to throw money at a situation that it needs additional study, not just from the health perspective, on whether or not we can even fulfill those amounts of money that are being given to health, point of uh, order, whether there's Mr. an actual Chairman, need. Point of order, the good councilwoman has put words into our chief's mouth that simply were never uttered. And they should be stricken from the minutes. That's what it says. Uh, there's a memo right here in writing. Agenda. Push through a political agenda. Those are my words. Yeah, that's what you characterize our chief as saying, and it's not accurate. No, what I said the chief was saying was that it needs additional time to be looked at. And I referred to the memo. And I think he has representatives here that I, when I'm done speaking, I'd like to defer time that uh, Chief Crittenden's representatives have an opportunity to speak. Is but there a representative a, here for? There is. Yeah. And there's, and I know that as the ch chairs, we were, we want to consider this. We want to figure out what is doable and what is not. So we've already asked for reports and findings, whether or not, and I think that uh, Chief Crittenden refers to this, the BOA covenants on whether or not our existing agreements with the bank for lines of credit would be violated if we change uh, the dividend, because we, as a council, I believe, agreed and passed on those covenants before signing in. So there's legal ramifications um, that would also then not only, of course, law legal issues, but ramifications on our credit rating long term. <coughs> then there's also the idea of whether or not it would impact our existing ability to fulfill current contracts and contracts in the pipeline. So I'd like to defer the rest of my time to the representative for uh, Chief Crittenden, and then I think it's it would be um, prudent for us to hear from David Stewart, who's here on behalf of Cherokee Nation Businesses, who it would definitely be impacting. Point of order. My point of order is that, uh, you know, she could call a representative for specific technical information, not for debate. And though my good friend, uh, Joe Critton, is chief of the Cherokee Nation, he no longer sits in this body. And he doesn't have a, a seat at this table. He has a seat over there, and he's got the, the power of veto, and, and he has that power. But he doesn't have a seat at this table. And this is, this is the people's table. And we sit here to represent them. And uh, procedurally, it's on the agenda properly. I don't. I think I have made a motion that it goes from this body to full council. We voted up. We voted down. That's the rules of this council. It doesn't go from here to another committee to another committee. Although you might want it to be that way, the procedure is it's in this committee, and we have a choice as the people's body to send it from here to full point council. Of order. We've now gotten from a point of order to debate. <coughs> somehow I'm not quite sure. I'm still at the point of order. Uh, you, You've said a lot of things here, and uh, so let's keep it to the issue. You have a motion and you have a second, and we don't need administration weighing in on this issue. Okay, I, I see our tribal uh, <clears throat> council attorney step forward here. Uh, With the indulgence of the chair, uh, uh, let me uh, uh, wade through some of the points that have been made first as to the letter of uh, uh, Acting Chief uh, Crittenden, that should be made part of the record, and, and it is, and it, it speaks for itself. It is what it is. Uh, the memorandum that that, that I have passed out uh, to to all uh, ca council members uh, uh, needs to be made part of the record, and again, that speaks for itself. Uh, uh, procedurally, we've had a, a, a an item on the agenda that that made the the agenda item. It's also, it's my understanding that the speaker has referred it to two other committees: health and executive finance. Uh, our rules show that uh, a committee or that a single piece of legislation can have concurrent jurisdictions. That means it, you know, if, if it involves um, uh, obviously rules, which is a, the, the lawmaking uh, body of this committee, it involves executive finance in, in, in that it involves the, the dividend distributions of the of, of Cherokee Nation businesses. It involves health in that it, it, it reserves part of that dividend for uh, uh, contract services uh, in, in much needed services. Uh, the, uh, the idea is that 
when there are concurrent jurisdictions on a, on a committee that the, uh, that the piece of legislation needs to be uh, considered by those. It can be co co properly considered by the Rules Committee right now. Uh, it could be uh, an, an, a motion to amend the agenda uh, in one hour. It can be considered by the uh, uh, Executive Finance Committee later on this day. That's one of the options that I, that I put in my uh, dividend. It can also be placed on the Health Committee uh, agenda in proper time frame, uh, which is uh, that has a meeting prior to the next health, uh, the next full council, uh, uh, regular scheduled full council. So it is possible to, to have all three committees uh, consider this piece of legislation prior to the, next, the, the, the full council meeting. Um, that w with that being said, obviously, uh, uh, there, there is a motion on the floor. It has been seconded. The only way now at this point to, to not consider it would be a motion to table. Uh, and then if it, if it passes the Rules Committee, it needs to go to the, uh, you know, it, 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 it goes to full council, but if there are other actions in other committees, um, that work slow it up, and then it, it needs to pass all three committees. But there is a possibility that all that all three committees can consider this piece of legislation prior to the next regular council meeting, and that's you know that's in accord with uh, with the uh, memorandum that that I put forward and gave the council several options to to do. So, in your opinion, Todd, we need to go ahead and act on this, but we can move it to hell. It's my understanding that it has already been assigned to those other committees okay. by, by virtue of the, the, the speaker in accordance to a rule of procedure. That means that it needs to be uh, considered by health. We have obviously plenty of time to put it on the health agenda. Well, um, we don't have plenty of time to put it on the ENF agenda. But there is an ENF agenda uh, meeting, you know, hopefully in a few minutes, <laughs> uh, uh, that, that the council could consider that, that in. Or in the alternative, it can't, it, 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 it's not. There could be a special EMF meeting held uh, uh, prior to the, 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 the full council uh, to, to be considered. Uh, but uh, those are the options that are available as, as I see it. Uh, but the motion's been properly made and been properly seconded at this point. Okay, hang on. Kara, you always. Yeah, so, you know, we have historically welcome or out of cooperation the other branches of government to come to the table if we're setting a new precedent for how we're going to treat the chief going forward then the people making that precedent will have to live with that so do you can you speak to that well we you know uh, the I don't, I don't even know thing what you mean by president being said but uh, uh, our rules and procedures are very very clear. The right to debate is a right that is held by counselors. Okay, uh, I am here to for you to ask me technical questions, uh, as or Mr. Stewart or anyone else uh, from the administration. Uh, those are uh, and, and those are questions that the council, as a deliberative body, have the right to ask these individuals. So uh, it, it is all in on. Uh, you know, can they debate? No. Can they be asked questions? Yes, if, it, if, if so required. So, Mr. Chair, sorry to interrupt you, Todd. So, just so that we can move forward, I'll read this into the record, and then we can have uh, David Stewart come forward and address some of the technical issues that I've asked about concerning the covenants, and if the Board of Directors has been approached, and those kind of things. Point of order, Mr. Yeah. Chairman. The, the letter's been distributed, and if we want to talk to the minutes, I suppose that's fine, but it's seem to overburden the record to spend time reading. So I'd ask the councilwoman to dispense with that. That's so why I just asked that it be typed up and included in the body of the minutes then. Thank you. I'll accept that. Thank, Thank you. you. And so if we can hear from David Stewart concerning the covenants for the Bank of America agreement, the legislation we've already passed, any impact on Cherokee Nation businesses and those things, I would appreciate that. Uh, well, some of this is legal in nature, but from a, just a process standpoint, we have a couple of agreements with uh, Bank of America and the family of banks that uh, has uh, issued the credit. Uh, <coughs> we have no balance on the credit line, keep in mind, but from a procedure standpoint, uh, you know, we owe them courtesy. We have a process to go through. They have to approve it at their committee level. 
and for us to arbitrarily increase uh, might violate some of that process and not give them a chance to weigh in. I mean, that, without looking at the merits of the dividend, which is not my issue, uh, that, that is my concern. Uh, I would also be concerned just that we know the impact we have. Our budgeting process is just finalizing this month uh, with our capital budget and our operating budget. We have $100 million worth of uh, projects on the table. So what I would like to do is put that into some uh, cash forecast just so that uh, you as a council understand the implications of that and know where that is. Uh, just from an advisory standpoint, that's I think it would be prudent. Yeah, if it's going to be prudent. Oh, it'd be prudent. We've got to uh, we crossed this bridge uh, two years ago, and you went to the bank, and you talked to them, and did they not tell you that it was no problem whatsoever? Yeah, I don't think it's going to be a problem because I mean, we have. They specifically told us it was no problem. <clears throat> well, I mean, it was off the record, but the problem with the line, it's in excess of $100 million, so they have to go to committee. So we have Bank of America, we have Bank of Oklahoma, Bank First, Chase Bank. So basically what, as a process, we should request that they approve that, let them go to committee, come back and say, yeah, it's okay. I don't think it's going to be a problem, but for us to just unilaterally do that, I think would be somewhat in violation of our agreement with the... Oh, we already talked to them about it, though. We, we have talked about it. That's and, exactly and correct. They, they agreed to it almost two years ago. Well, we didn't go through the formal process. We had informal discussions that said, you know, do you think it would be a problem? And they said, we don't think so. Well, we passed it two years ago, and we thought it was going to pass, and it was vetoed. I mean, we, we already been, we were really there, Dave. Well, I don't, I don't recall going through that formal process, though. I mean, I can look back, but I... I know that we didn't send them a letter say, would you formally approve us increasing the dividend? And then they go through their loan committees coming back to us and saying, yeah, that's okay, and now you can go forward. I don't think we did that. Sean, Sean are you here? I'm here. Do you recall what? I don't recall on the current, but we can when we get past it. That may have been on the old agreement. We did renegotiate and have a new agreement, so maybe that... Maybe that's what you're thinking about. Because it did come up and we went through all this, but our new agreement, we have uh, we have a non-interference agreement and then we also have the loan agreement. The loan interference agreement, basically, non-interference agreement basically says, you know, the, the council can't step in and take action that would put us in default or create some uh, deficiency. Uh, we don't owe anything right now. No, no, uh, yeah, clear. We don't owe anything. That, that's not what this is about. So more about process, more about bank relations, and then understanding the cash flow forecast. Okay, next is uh, David. Mr. Chairman, I think I still have the floor and I had some questions specifically for Sorry. concerning the technical. Okay. Because he hasn't addressed. So, how, so I would like to know how much cash on hand CNB has as well as versus our existing project commitments and the approximate number of jobs associated with those project commitments. And then, yes, that's all I need. I don't know the exact cash balance today. As of the end of June, it was about, I think, 20 million, of which some of that uh, is uh, in our facilities for uh, to pay uh, payouts and so on. We have several million dollars that's required to stay at the casinos. So the existing projects in the life, Snowmageddon's replacement, what do we have over the next right. year? We have, like we, we have about a little over a hundred million dollars in commitments on projects. Alright. So and then we have other projects in terms of acquisitions. We've got some investment uh, as a result of the and forty that's in million. Addition to the hundred million. Yeah, as a result of the forty million dollar acquisition and the Walmart contract, and we really haven't put that into any cash flow forecast. So I can't really sit here and tell you what the cash balance is going to be in six months. Uh, but if you'll give me a little bit of time, I can put our net income, our capital budgeting 
in there. Uh, we haven't finished our capital budgets, which we have a maintenance capex of, you know, X $10 million for the facilities. So anyway, all those numbers are floating around. And um, until I have time to put them all down on paper, uh, it's very difficult. I just can't, I can't tell you what that's going to be. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you. Now, let me explain how we got here. Ms. Cowan brought David up on her time. She yielded a time to build, John. Everybody is in order as they raise their hand. So I'm not moving anybody <coughs> up back and forth. So just want to make that very clear to everybody. That's how we're going down the road. David, you're next. A question, Mr. Stewart. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the CMB board, uh, how many board members do we have? 11. Uh, what's their what's their salary? This their uh, annual salary. There is a uh, there's a compensation uh, memo. It is based on uh, different committees that you're on. There is a base fee, and then if you're on other committees, you have additional fees, and then uh, the chairman has a different fee. So you basically depending upon your workload. So what's I can get. Base? Huh? What, what's the base? I believe it's twenty four thousand. Yeah. If it's extra stopping for every committee you set up. Yes, if you so set, if you're. Uh, I think it's a total of forty eight is the max, and then I think the chairman is at seventy five. I can and I can get you that that memo that goes through all of that. It's a, a memo that describes that. Is that related to this issue or? Well, we got a sidebar going here. Okay. Okay. Uh, call for the question. I have some other people. Does that mind. need a second? I'll second it. Not while there's other people. Well, I've got other people on the list. I mean, list. you're cutting out. Mm -hmm. I thought call for the question was call for immediate vote. Again, we'll say on uh, a call for the question is a motion for previous question. That is a motion that ends debate and calls the, the main motion for, for immediate vote. That requires a two-thirds vote in the affirmative to cut off debate. Are you seconding this? Yes. Uh, David has called for the question. Tyler has seconded. So we'll vote on it and see if, it, if you want to stop the debate. Roll call. Just yes to uh, stop the debate, no to continue uh, letting other people speak on it. Shelly? Dick Light? Yes. Curtis Snell? Yes. David Thornton? Yes. David Walking Stick? Yes. Kara Callan Watts? No. Bill England? No. Bill John Baker? No. Jack Baker? No. Julia Coates? Jody Fishing Hawk? No. Janelle Fulbright? David Don Garvin? Yes. Chuck Coskin Jr.? Yes. Tyna Glory Jordan? Yes. Lee Keener, Jr. No. We have six yes and six no. Motion. Motion failed. So we'll continue. Point of order, Mr. Chair, is uh, Council Walking walk Stick still up before? Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, I'm finished. He's finished? Okay. Uh, Chuck, you're next. Thank you, Mr. Chair. David, um, I think we've been down this path a couple of times. One of the most recent times was when Mr. Carson was standing where you are. And, and I think we went over it in some detail because there was initially some concern, I think somewhat vague concern raised about whether Bank of America might exercise some sort of veto power uh, effectively over our ability to raise our dividend. And I think after a period of time of discussion, I think he made it crystal clear that 
Bank of America exercises no such veto power. And in fact, it doesn't violate a single covenant of any agreement we have with Bank of America for us to increase our dividends. So if I'm wrong about that, tell me. Put procedure aside for a second. I don't think there's a single provision in any contract that will be triggered by us raising this dividend. Is that your understanding? Well, I, I would tend to agree with you. I mean, it doesn't on its face. Uh, the non-interference agreement says that the council will not pass anything that would uh, be a detriment to the loan agreement. Now, now the, the other factor that's a little, little deeper is that our negotiated rate for this uh, agreement is uh, very favorable, all right? And so any time we go ask a change, they have the right to say, you want that, we want this. And so with the banking environment, uh, there are all kinds of those kinds, you know, when you go back and say, I want to change, there is the potential that they would say, well, we'll let you do that, but we want to charge you a higher rate, or we want to do that. So, But you're not asking them for a change. Well, yes, we are. Yeah, there's a change in the non the non-interference agreement states that, that an increase in that dividend interferes with the contract. Well, it potentially would. But it doesn't say that in explicit terms. I mean, it, it, I, I think I've read the thing. It's been a number of years. It's it's fairly complex. But I think any time you change that document, it says from 30% to another percent, that effectively is going to require a change in the document. So, but I'm not a lawyer, and I'll have to defer to that. Because the percentage is actually nowhere in the document. I believe it is. I don't think it is, but we'll, we'll get it. Uh, yeah. You think it is? I think it is. You could, I suspect, given your relationship with the Bank of America, find out answers to these questions between now and the next full council meeting. Well, I can tell you, I, I don't think it's going to be a problem if we do it in right process. I mean, you know, is we, that because the end result of us increasing at five percent is not going to be construed as interference with this uh, contract? It's not because of that. It's because we would need to sit down with them, go through our projections, go through our cash needs. Because I can tell you, they will just not go. Yeah, okay. They'll go. What is your? What are your capital needs? What's your capital budget for the next year? What are your projected net income numbers? And they will want to see that projection out to provide their cash balance before they will weigh in on that. They're just not going to tell us over the phone you can do that. And the last time this was raised, they gave the green light? No, no, they wanted to sit down and do exactly what we're talking about. They wanted to know what are your projections, what are your cash, proje uh, you know, your capital budgeting, and where does that land you if, in fact, you increase it 5%? But the last time this went through, it actually passed full council and went to the chief's desk. And you hadn't, by that time, gotten with Bank of America and gotten their position on it? See, I don't, I don't remember that. That it may have vetoed. been Brad. It was vetoed. And so, I, I yeah. mean, we know it was vetoed. Okay. Chief Smith vetoed a 5% increase in the dividend that would have went to health care for the Cherokee people. That is a fact. Okay. My question is, surely by that point, Cherokee Nation businesses, perhaps it was CNE at the time, but Cherokee Nation businesses surely had a discussion with Bank of America as to whether that would violate something, cause some change in something. I think the facts are it wasn't going to change a thing. The chief still vetoed it, but it wasn't going to change a thing. So I guess I would urge you to look into that between now and full council because I think that would be plenty of time for you to look into it because I can't imagine that Mr. Carson, if he was in your position at that time, got to the point where a piece of legislation that would increase the dividend by 5% for health care for the Cherokees, I can't imagine he got to that point without going through whatever process he needed to go through with Bank of America. Because, well, I, it, because but for the Chief's veto pen, it would, have went, it would have increased. Well, I think it's a new debt agreement. I think it's a new instrument. Because we went through a whole renegotiation of that, and it was quite complex. And we went through the, you know, the waiver and the non-interference agreement, and so even even if, even though that may be the case, doesn't that reinforce in your mind that the Bank of America will be uh, this isn't a financial or legal term, but will be fine with this? Well, they here's won't here's have any okay. So let, we'll, if we play it out, I'm going to have a meeting. I'm going to say the council is going to. 
has voted to increase the dividend 5%. And they go, well, okay, we've got to check that out. They're going to say, whoa, anytime you change a debt instrument of a $125 million loan, they're going to say, we don't agree with that until we check it out. So what they'll do is they'll say, okay, sit down with our analysts. You don't have the balance today, but tell us what that's going to do to your cash, given your investment and your investment strategy. So we'll lay all that out, and their analysts will sit down, and you know we'll have to go to all four banks, right? They all four banks have this process, and they have to all agree, not just one, all four. So they all have to send it to their analysts. Their analysts will sit down because each of them treat this as an individual twenty-five million dollar loan. So they, they sit down in their bank. We've got a $25 million participation. We'll sit down. We'll look at that, anal, that cash flow, and they will make a recommendation to their committee. Okay, so it goes to the analyst. Analyst gives it to committee. Committee sits down. They will make a decision on that, and they will say yay or nay, and then we'll start the paperwork. Then they'll give it to the lawyers. <laughs> so then the lawyers get involved. I mean, I'm just saying... I just think for us, it's prudent for us to uh, go to uh, the bank, get that worked out. They say no problem. We come back and then pass it, and then we're all done. I just think we've kind of got the cart before the horse on this from a procedure standpoint. Have you put that process into place? I mean, this is on our agenda. I mean, have you started that? I mean, we're already considering this. I've had, informal had discuss yes, I've had informal discussions, and, and we've discussed this very process. And those informal discussions haven't given you any reason to think that there's going to be a problem. I don't think there will be. <clears throat> but Chairman, but I'm, just, I'm just saying, you know, just to just pass it and not go through that process, I think, is uh, the bank relationship, I think, is somewhat compromised. Well, I think that if we were passing, if this was full council today, we would be passing it. But we do have some time, and I mean... I think there is time for you to invoke that process. But, Mr. Chairman, I think if history is any guide, we're going to, we're going to find that Bank of America, who we don't answer to, but Bank of America is not going to have a problem with this. This is an opportunity to do this, Councilman Baker says, fulfill a need that we have. We go story after story. I've got a kid in my district who's in high school. He's a football player. He's, he's got a contract health claim that will not be filled, will not be fulfilled. And... It's not just that his athletic career is ruined. This kid might not ever be the same. But he got a letter saying it was denied. And that is one story of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. We've got the resources. We've, we ought to do something, and we ought to act with some dispatch here. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Hi. Uh, I wasn't on. I'm sorry. I wasn't on there. Yeah, you were. Uh, okay, Dick. Thank you. Uh, David, you, do, do you work for Jay Hanna? I mean, is he the top of the heap in, in the uh, scheme yeah, of things? Yeah, I would call him. I'd be right under him. Okay. <laughs> the board of directors, actually, not him individually, okay. but the board. Right. So, you know, I, I've seen today, I, I don't know you real well, but I know Jay, he's a smart fellow, a good banker. You I'll, I'll tell to, him you said. Yeah, tell him. <laughs> You seem to be a smart businessman. I know you guys have contingency plans. And I know you guys heard about these, this extra dividend that the council wanted, what, a couple of years ago. It's not like it just snuck up on you today. And so I, I'm sitting here, you know, thinking about the overall picture here. We gave you guys the direction to go out and make us a lot of money, and you've done it. And thank you. The idea is that you're going to hire a lot of Cherokee people and you're going to bring that money back to us as dividends that we can spend on services to our people. Let's don't forget what we're doing here and what your job is. Your job is to make us a lot of money so we can take it back, or some of it back. The extra 5%, you know, you know it's been coming for a long time. It's been brewing. It passed the council once. It got vetoed. Here it is again. So it's not like it snuck up on you today. Uh, my guess is that if we, you know, we've got another lead time of, of the next council meeting, I'm sure you'll have time to go talk to these bankers to get them lined out. Uh, as much money as our businesses are making us, I don't think the banks, just like you said, they're not going to argue with you too much. They're going to want to know what it is. 
But once they know and they get it in their projections, it looks like to me it ought to go just fine. So I don't know where, where we're at on I don't know what the argument is. Can you give me a good argument why we shouldn't take this extra 5% and send it to that kid who can't get his health care and to the young lady I know who couldn't get a stent put in her heart for two months because we didn't have the money? That's what I'm talking about. Well, that's your job in terms of yes, how sir. much should go to those people. And that's we're not, taking that money. That's that's. I won't really comment on that. That's yeah. you know, that's the council's job and not mine. My job is to make money and follow and, and get this you know run the business in an organized fashion. One thing that we don't do uh, as management is take all of the ideas that uh, have kind of percolated up over the years and act on them. If we did that. We would be going to the bank, we'd be going here, we'd be going there. So we wait until something is on the table, all right, and it's solid, so that when we go to the bank, we're not just kidding, it's serious. Yes, sir. And so then we would follow the exact process that uh, I just outlined. But lawyers will be involved, bank committees will be involved, and, uh, I mean, it's kind of a scramble process for us to do that, which, you know, I guess we can scramble, but we haven't scrambled before. We always deal with them in a very prudent manner and, and, and the way we would do that and my suggestion to do that would be for us to tell them we're contemplating it, run the projections, show them what our projections are, let them run it through their committee, come back and go thank you, you know, we, you know, appreciate that and not chances are 99% they're going to approve it. What I don't know is whether or not if we went to them in a, in a very rushed order and had to have it that they would say well we may want to change uh, the rates. I mean, I can tell you that the banking yeah. business, uh, you probably know, uh, banks look for any kind of reason to change rates and fees. It, and so I, I know, but until we pass it in full council, you can't take it and go, you're telling me you can't take it and take it to the banking committees and let them know that we're contemplating that it's probably going to pass. Right. I think what yeah. what I would suggest is that Excuse council me. recommend that that we evaluate the five percent dividend, that we go to our banks and run it through that process, and then we do our cash flow projection. And then the other thing we need to do is tell you as a council what that five percent does and what our cash is going to do over the next twelve to eighteen months, because you're making a decision that you really don't uh, know what the, the bottom line impact is without our budget and without that cash flow projection. I understand, but you're not giving this council that information until we pass it. That, that doesn't seem to, you know, you're not working with us. Mr. Chairman, the, the, um, it, it's, it's kind of a double-edged sword here. We, we have these people here to ask them technical questions about uh, uh, items and, and we don't want them to debate but again we can't ask them to debate uh, so uh, if we can you know, focus the the questions on uh, you know uh, specific information that 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 the that I or anyone else can, can, can do we, uh, uh, I'll just say to, to narrow those questions down uh, and and we're we're getting thank you for your time yeah I mean yes sir. we're working with you I don't want you to ever think I'm not working with the council I've never done you know, not done. Uh, Don Garvin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I guess I have more questions than uh, uh, has anything else, but uh, I know certain people are in a big, big hurry to push this through, ran it through, and so, uh, and uh, I uh, know we've done this before a couple of years ago, and uh, the kind of thing was coming that was in the campaign, and uh, uh, big question I've got: Is this going to be enough money, or is it going to be too much, or is it just going to be exactly come out even? Do we know how much money we're talking about here? And I'd like to ask Doug to tell us how much money we're talking about. Is it trillions, millions, thousands, a couple hundred? Does anybody know what we're talking about? Well. Yeah. And, and just, just for, I think, uh, some of us have talked about it, I think okay, that's why it's going to be held. I'd ask uh, David a couple of questions. Uh, what contracts do we have pending right now with the CMB? Okay, so we have, uh, we have the 
replacement of casi the casino at Hard Rock, which is a little over, what's the budget, 50 or 60, Sean? 50 million. Uh, and then I think 20 million for Ramona, approximately 20 million for uh, Fort Gibson, and then we have a little more uh, dedicated to Tahlequah pending the final design of that. But it's a minimum of 20. Uh, we've talked about building uh, a little more uh, a facility that's a little more amenable to a convention, you know, where we'd have a small hotel uh, and make that more of a gateway to the nation. So there's been talk about that. Uh, the, uh, there's going to require some investment on the $40 million contract at CNI. Uh, we have a maintenance budget of, I don't know, 10 or $20 million uh, mm -hmm. that we, across the facilities that we spend. So, like I said, I mean, would this endanger that $40 million bill in any way? Well, I mean, I don't think so. I mean, at the end of the day, like I said, I don't think it's going to be a problem. But I think in 60 days, we would have followed a good process with our bank and ensured that we, we dealt with the bank in a prudent way. I mean, that's what this boils down to. You yeah, just want to do it or do you want to have it? We're in a hurry. we got to get this done today. Can't wait. We're going to be here three or four years. We got to get it done today. Uh, how much money are we talking about? It's about five million. Five million. How much do we need? Five million. How much? We don't need it. What we're going to do with it? Do we need five million? I wish we could have a lot. If you're asking me, you're asking it's, it's your right. Yeah. I'm, I'm not but I just throw it out there. But anyway, uh, I think time is of essence, and the uh, election's getting closer. Thank you. Uh, uh, Jack Baker. Yes. I have a lot of concerns, primarily what Commissioner Stewart has addressed in the covenants with the bank, but also. I think more importantly is the effect of our investments in the future of our businesses. And that would affect even bringing smaller businesses into the Cherokee Nation to create jobs. So I make a motion that we table this until the October ENF committee. Second. Okay, we have a motion to table it. Not debatable. And not debatable. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Aye. So, roll call. Yes to table, no no. No, not table. Bill John Baker? No. Jack Baker? Yes. Julia Coates? Jody Fishing Hawk? Janelle Fulbright? Don Garvin? Yes. Chuck Hoskin Jr. No. Tyna Glory Jordan? No. Lee Kinger Jr. Yes. Dick Lay? No. Curtis Snell? No. David Thornton? David Walkingston? No. Kara Callan Watts? Yes. Bill Anglin? Yes. We have five yes and six no. Fail the table, so we will continue. Uh, David, you're next. Okay. Hey, uh, what's the what's the time frame as um, far as getting all your stuff with the banks and getting all this process? Like, what's the what's the quickest? Okay, the uh, we're submitting our final budgets, uh, which we have kind of a round number on the net income. Capital budget would be uh, we're presenting it to the executive committee, I believe, in two weeks, and it will be ratified at the next uh, board of directors meeting. Uh, but I would say. Uh, you know, in two or three weeks, I can have all of the cash flow projections. We can sit down with the bank, get that to them. Uh, so about three yeah, I, yeah, I need about I need about two or three weeks to get all my ducks in a row and put the cash flow projection together. I need to get it to the bank. They need to follow their process and get it to their committees. So I would say we can have it. I can ha well. It depends on what you want. You know, if you want to see a cash flow forecast based on 
what we what projects we have in the pipeline that's I would think you'd want to see that right so we have uh, the initiative with Walmart we have uh, some other initiatives in the 14 counties that we've allocated you know tens and twenties and thirty million dollar buckets uh, to do so once you see all of that then you take a look and go okay what are our cash balances and are we in fact borrowing to make the dividend I mean that's always been the, con the question uh, do you have just enough cash or are you actually borrowing to do the dividend and so I would advise you to know that as the business guy okay know whether you're borrowing or whether you have the cash balance to do that based on our uh, layering of all of our projects into the cash flow forecast then once you do that then make that decision uh, in the meantime the bank will probably say yes because they'll see that forecast and you're done so, I mean thanks, thanks David yeah good very good Real job. Have you ever borrowed to pay the dividend? That's what the current rate. Uh, actually, if we are in a net borrowing position, we would have borrowed to pay the 30% dividend for a period of time. Yes. But for years, we were carried a $100 million line of credit, and for years, I asked you, have you borrowed against it yet? And for That's years, right. you told me That's no. right. And Bill John, again, I, I don't think this is an issue about whether or not they're going to approve it. Yeah, okay. And, and I don't either. But yeah. I know that somebody can come through wanting us to make a movie that we're never going to make a dime on, and we can give two hundred thousand dollars. I call for a question. Thank you. Question been called. Roll call vote. Chuck Hoskin, Jr. Point of clarification. Yes. 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 Lee Keener Jr. No. Dick Lay? Yes. Curtis Snell? Yes. David Thornton? David Walking Stick? Yes. Kara Callan Watts? No. Bill Anglin? No. Bill John Baker? Yes. Jack Baker? No. Julia Coates? Jody Fishing Hawk? Janelle Fulbright? Don Garvin? No. Past six to five. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, moving on to the next item. We have just a few minutes. Uh, speaker Watch, you want to address this travel travel council travel policy? It's already late, so okay. if there's no objection, well, I guess we're going to take a vote. I would move to table till next month. Okay, all in favor of table? Uh, say aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. Table. Next meeting will be the 29th of September. I have a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye.